Every camera system has its nifty 50, a 50 millimeter or equivalent lens that is small, light, inexpensive, and all around a great first prime lens for someone jumping into that camera system. Sony sells a 50 mil 1.8 for 249 US dollars. Canon sells a 50 mil 1.8 RF for 199. Fuji sells their XC 35 millimeter F2 for 199. And Nikon has their 50 mil 1.8 S lens for the Z system for 599. Ouch. Yep. There has been a nifty 50 hole in the Z lineup since its inception. Dare I say that Nikon is finally taking steps to address it with a 40 millimeter F2? Let's run down what this lens offers and see if it finally provides a good solid nifty 50 or if it's just a warty 40. Up next after the intro. Hi guys, I'm Ted. This is Stuff You Might Like and Don't Shoot Me. I'm just the messenger. So right off, let me say that I purchased this lens with my own money and in no way affiliated with Nikon. Also, I'm not part of the Canadian YouTube Mafia, so don't expect Gerald Dundun to show up in the middle of this video looking to examine my studio. And finally, I'm not sponsored by Squarespace, Storyblocks, or any other big YouTube money. With that, let's get on with the review. I've been shooting Nikon a long time and I migrated to the Z system about three years ago. And since that time, I've been missing a quality, small and light, 50 millimeter equivalent lens that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Now, out of the gate, Nikon released the 50 mil 1.8 S lens, and much has been lauded about its magical abilities at curing nail pattern baldness and its incredible sharpness. And for my usage, that is true. The sharpness, not the, the nail pattern baldness thing. The sharpness is incredible. It's a great lens for the price, but it's also a bit large and heavy, and at 600 US dollars, it's not very nifty. Nikon has been promising a couple of small and light primes on their lens roadmap now for about a year. The first of those, the 28mm 2.8 SE, debuted alongside the Nikon ZFC and is finally available as part of the ZFC kit after a delay of a couple months. Standalone sales of the 28mm f2.8 SE have been delayed until November though, so don't go looking for one anytime before then. The second small and light prime is the 40mm f2. It finally started shipping last week and I've been putting mine through its paces ever since. So let's get the specs out of the way. The 40mm f2 consists of six elements in four groups and has nine rounded diaphragm blades. The lens uses 52mm filters and weighs in at six ounces or 170 grams. Of course, there is no image stabilization on this lens. Now I have to celebrate Nikon here for their commitment to minimalism because the 40mm f2 ships with Front and rear lens caps, a manual, and a warranty card. No lens hood, no carrying pouch, nothing. But seriously, I'm kind of miffed here there isn't an included lens hood at this price. It would have cost them all of a few cents to include one, and the emission just screams cheapskate, but it is what it is. The lens mount is Fantastico Plastico, and yeah, it helps keep the weight down, and then that gun get to that price point. The lens itself is no frills, no focus clutch, no control button, just a focus ring. Are you sensing a pattern now? Now, you do have the ability to swap using the focus ring from focus throw to controlling aperture, exposure compensation, or ISO. So there is that. So the lens build is on the low end of cheap. Let's take a look at how it performs and whether that cheapness is visible in the quality of the images that it takes. All right, so let's take a look at the chart here and see how this lens fares for sharpness. Uh, you can see here at f2.0, uh, in the center we are pretty sharp, and as you'd expect for a lens this price, the corners are pretty not sharp. If we blow up here in the center, you see as we get outside the, the center, it gets a little blurry at f2, but it holds up really well in the center. So we'll now go to the next image, and now at f2.8, you see here inside the center, and as we get outside the center, uh, sharpness increases, but we're still, still pretty blurry at the corners. Uh, going to f4, starts to get a bit better. By f5, 0.6 you are looking much much better I'd say that's probably the sweet spot f8 everything in the corners is pretty sharp 
Uh, the center is about as sharp as it gets. And F16, you're pretty much sharp all the way around. This lens does only go to F16, F2.0 to F16. Now let's take a look at uh, distortion. Uh, doesn't look like we have much. Looks pretty, pretty good. Pretty well compensated. And keep in mind that Lightroom does not have any profiles for this lens just yet. So we're just going off what Lightroom would normally do. All right, let's take a look at a few images here. Just cycle through. This is at F2. See, plenty, plenty sharp in the edge. And it starts to break up around the sides. Another F2.0. F2.0, you can see here in the center, we're pretty sharp. Here's another at f2.0, another at f2.0. You see here the, the writing in the center is pretty sharp. In the corners here, not so much. Even this far out of the corner, it's still pretty sharp. 2.2. Two point two. This is at f eight. See most of the stuff here. When you get into the corners is still pretty sharp. This is f two point zero. Two point zero. This is at f two point zero. F eight. Two point zero. 2.0, 2.0, f8, this is at f2.0, and you'll see here we get some pretty nice sun stars, although we do get a bit of flare when shooting into the sun. Uh, you will note that this, and we'll take a look here, this is at f16 obviously. Uh, I do have Lightroom's Remove Chromatic Aberration turned off here, so we can just take a look at Chromatic Aberration, and you're not really getting much. Uh, a little bit in some places with this extreme backlighting, uh, but not as much as you'd see in some other lenses that are about at this price point. Chromatic Aberration is pretty well controlled, so that's good to see. Here's another Sun Star. You see again, we're getting the flare. Extreme issue of the flare and ghosting here. This is a good example of the lens's bokeh. Here we are at f2.0. Um, you know, you do get a bit of onion ringing in some of these, but it is uh, consistently round, uh, which I find pleasing. I don't really like cat's eye bokeh. Uh, I'll take onion ringing over cat's eye any day. Uh, so it stays consistently round at f2.0, which is nice. And here you'll see, again, I have removed chromatic aberration turned off, and we're not really getting much here. So Woka is pretty well controlled. Let's see if I turn this on, it doesn't really make any difference. So this is what we're getting. Uh, there's really nothing to improve. So that's good to see in a lens at this price point. I have to say, I'm torn on the 40mm f2 lens. Lens optics are good, and the quiet stepping motor means you can use it for video work and not worry about a noisy motor. And I've been longing for a small and light lens for the Z system since I bought mine in 2018. First, I'm just not a fan of the 40mm focal length. It's more telly than 35mm and wider than 50mm, and it's just not a focal length I find comfortable when I'm out and about shooting. Second, there's the build quality. While the optics are good and the SDM motor focuses quietly, 
The cheapness of the mount and the lack of a lens hood irks me at this price point. Nikon should have made the mount metal and included a lens hood and charged an additional $29. I have no problems with the plastic barrel because after all a metal barrel would have made this lens heavier than its intended target audience. Now this lens reminds me a lot of the Fuji XC 35mm f2 lens. Both lenses have similar construction, plastic barrel and mount. No extra switches or buttons. Both lenses are very good optically and have quiet STM motors in focus. Both lenses are packaged in a no-nonsense, no-frills package. However, the Fuji XC 35mm f2 is $199. This lens is $100 more. Uh, I feel it's just a bit more expensive than what it should be, but hopefully over time the price will come down. But looking at this lens in a vacuum, it features quality optics and smooth silent focusing at a price that, at least as far as Nikon Z's lens prices go, not too far beyond what it should cost. Yes, the build is cheap and the lens mount is plastic, but if handled well, this lens should provide you years of good pictures. As for me, while I'm not a fan of the focal length, the lens itself fits a need I have for a small and light lens for my Z system, so it's a keeper. Let me know what you think about the 40mm f2 down below in the comments. Are you happy to have an inexpensive, semi-fast lens for the Z mount at this price point? Are you happy with the 40 millimeter focal length? Let me know. Hey, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you didn't, click the thumbs down button and share it with another Nikon shooter. That's it for me. I'll see you when you see me next, whenever and wherever that will be. Thanks. Fantastico, plástico.